Today I have the Canvas Studio 22 all-in-one pen display computer. Is this the all-in-one we've been waiting for? I'm going to give you my full detail review in just a sec. I'm John, and I just came back from negotiating peace between two warring countries. When I'm not doing that, I do reviews and tutorials on things used in the creative process. Now remember who you were supposed to be by dropping a like, dropping a comment, hitting the sub button, clicking the bell, so you won't miss anything. Oh, dinner's ready. We'll start with what's in the box. First, we have a smudge guard glove, your power cord, and your power brick, which it plugs into, a microfiber cloth to keep that screen clean, a bag of screws for your stand, a little doohickey screwdriver tool to screw in this stand to the back of your display. Connecting it, real easy, four screws, and you're done. To change position, you're gonna pull that top button up, and the stand is gonna lock in place depending on where you leave it. I found it to be sturdy, even with the additional weight of having PC parts inside of it. Again, but laying it flat, and why would you, is still gonna be problematic because of the weight of the device on the stand. An instruction booklet, which normally I don't read, however, this one has your Windows key on the back of it. Now my unit did come with a keyboard and mouse. Again, the keyboard is not gonna win any awards, but it's perfectly serviceable, especially for just getting around Windows doing your basic office productivity stuff, and maybe some web browsing. It takes a AA battery, which you get to from the back, just popping a lid off and popping that battery in, and you're good to go. Likewise, it's similar with the mouse. It's not gonna be used by a high-performing gamer, but to get around Windows and such, it's perfectly fine. Par for the course for any wireless mouse. You'll find the wireless dongle for both the keyboard and mouse by removing the bottom cover of the mouse, revealing where the battery goes. And finally, you're gonna take that dongle and you're gonna plug it into one of the four USB 3.0 ports on the side of the unit. And there is your nice bit of kit. We'll talk about the pen in just a minute. Instant oatmeal? A half rotten avocado? What the? Made in Canada? Ah! Okay, let's pay the bills on this pen display. It measures 21.5 inches diagonally. It is electromagnetic resonance, EMR for short, and Huion continues to use this digitizer pen technology as it's the best drawing experience out there, in my opinion. The resolution is 1920 by 1080, that is 1080p. It's an IPS panel with 16.7 million displayable colors. Contrast ratio is 1000 to 1 and a color gamut of 120% sRGB. It has 20 shortcut keys with sliders on each side for right or left-handed use, which control zoom, brush size, and etc. Now this is a fully laminated display. Why is that important? Lamination mitigates parallax. Parallax is a cursor offset caused by the thickness of the glass, which creates a gap between the pen tip and the digitizer. We don't like that. So this is why you see lamination keep coming up in these reviews as an important feature. The results are great. Parallax is minimized, and as you can see, even with a ring light pointed directly at this display, the glare is minimized. And the pen on glass feel is better than either a matte screen protector and or glass alone. It's slightly texturized, giving you a little bit of resistance. The PW500 pen is like an old friend. It's battery free, it has 8192 pressure levels, and it supports tilt at about 60 degrees. Crack open the donut shaped pen holder to reveal the nibs and nib remover inside. The pen can be placed horizontally across the pen holder or it can be put vertically right in the middle of the hole of the donut. When I say old friend, I mean it feels familiar. It's got two programmable buttons across the top with a rubberized grip so it doesn't slip out of your hand. The thickness of the barrel tapers toward the back of the pen, which does not feature an eraser. The pen tip is stiff, so it feels really good against the glass. It doesn't have a squishy feel at all. I've tested this pen a few times now, and it feels just as good now as it did before. Yes, hello, front desk. This is John in room uh, mine. Yeah, I, I just want to make a comment about the service I received today. You clearly don't understand the customer's always right. I don't have to take this. I'm going to call the police. Let's pay the bills on the PC components of this device. At the center is an 8th gen Intel Core i5-8400 processor. It's got six cores and six threads. You can get this in two different memory configurations, 8 or 16 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. I am testing with the latter. The response rate of this display is 8 milliseconds, which is really good for an art display. 
Your network connectivity options are both Wi-Fi and wired Ethernet at 1 gigabyte, and for all the rest of your wireless accessories, it's Bluetooth 4.2. Your host operating system is going to be Windows 10 Professional. For storage, you have a 1 terabyte hard drive and either a 120 gigabyte or a 240 gigabyte SSD drive for your primary drive. SSD means it's fast. The GPU is an Intel HD Graphics 630, and the motherboard is an Intel HD 310 chipset. Now these specs aren't going to blow anybody away, obviously. It's not a high performance gaming rig. But for 2D art and light 3D work, it performs just fine. On the side of the device, we have our physical connectivity options. From right to left, you have power, HDMI out, VGA out. You have four 3.0 USB ports, and the wired gigabit ethernet is in the middle. Finally, you've got your mic and headset jack in the end, which I used a lot. The included speakers are fine for browsing and basic office productivity stuff, but for multimedia, music and movies, etc., you really want to use a good pair of headsets or a good set of external speakers. Finally, top and bottom of display have plenty of airflow, which is helped by the fact that the unit is probably in a 90 degree configuration most of the time, helping those fans push the hot air out through the top. I didn't find heat to be a problem, but like any PC, you don't want to run it 24 seven. Obviously, it's going to get hot in the back hello yes i i would like to report hostile behavior uh towards me i was served uh bad food yeah i'd go outside to get my own food but there's people there that's why i called you guys setup is super easy you're gonna rip the film off and hit the one button up at the top which is power boot up time is relatively quick Although Windows with its updates can tend to slow things down. The Huion driver is already pre-installed, so I didn't feel a need to really go through it. It has everything you need, including application-specific profiles, which I've already done a video on. I'll link it up below. The first thing you want to do, however, is get in there, go into updates, and keep running it until it's done. Depending on when you get your unit, you could have a full Windows 10 feature update in there. That could take a little bit. The short story is the Windows side of things was a piece of cake. So we'll do some quick pen tests in Sketchbook Pro, and I'm seeing the same thing I saw in the Canvas Pro 22, which I reviewed, and that's a good thing. Meaning I have consistent pressure and a good gradient between my light, medium, and hard strokes. I switched to the pen tool, and I'm doing almost complete circles. What I'm looking for, any drops in pressure as I move along the curve. And as you can see, the curves finish nicely. They taper off without any shoelace effect, and they maintain their pressure as I went around the curve. Finally, some long strokes, again, looking for that shoelace effect, and this pen continues to be consistent. We can see at the lightest edges of pressure how light those strokes are and how thick they get and are still able to taper off accurately towards the end. That's really all you can ask for in a pen. You may see the cursor lagging behind a little bit. That is standard EMR lag. That's consistent with any EMR device I've ever tested, so don't panic about it. Send somebody right over? Yeah. Great. Yep. Sure, I'll I'll stay right here. No, I won't move. Okay, awesome. Okay, we'll move to Photoshop. We've got a dead pixel brush with no stabilization doing a line test. We're looking for jitter and we're looking for line wobble. And these lines are good. They're not perfect. There's a slight amount of wobble there, but it's perfectly acceptable. Especially considering in Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint, you do have stabilization as an option. And as you guys know, I don't put too much weight into these ruler tests. Now tilt works as expected. I used two different programs to test my results. One is Expressy because it clearly shows uh, the icon of the pen moving when I tilt it on screen for you guys. The second is Photoshop. In both programs, tilt worked just fine. The only negative I would say is we're still seeing some cursor offset when we tilt the pen. Now it's not as bad as last year's and it's getting better. And I have to be honest, I only notice it when I'm looking for it and I'm looking for it now because some of you guys brought it up in the comment. Point is, it really doesn't affect my drawing experience, but that's me personally. Oh wow, you guys are fast. And there, there's so many of you, you guys really take this food surface seriously. I mean, yeah, I'm not. I, could you maybe turn the sirens down? My, my neighbors will complain. Yeah, you know what? I don't like them anyway. It's fine. So the best way I could classify the hardware specs of this device are adequate. The CPU is fine. The increased uh, 16 gigabyte of memory worked out well for me with a lot of layers in Photoshop. 
The GPU is really the bottleneck here. And that's only gonna be for extreme things like obviously gaming, right? Which is whatever, it's not an art thing. But, and then, you know, high polygonal 3D work, which to be honest with you, I really got from uh, Mark Brunette's video from QBrush uh, when he went through his review. I'm not a 3D artist. Anyway, for most applications, 2D art, painting, uh, photography, all those kinds of things, I think this is actually a great entry point, especially if you don't want to be bothered building your own computer. And that's really the use case here. That's the target audience. Could you go out there on your own and build maybe a little bit better of a computer or maybe even a lot better of a computer for a similar price and then you go find the, the, the Canvas Pro 22 and, and you add that into it. But it, it, it's a lot of different factors, right? So I would target this towards people who don't want to build their own computer, right? I was able to unbox this, install Windows, install updates and draw, period. Uh, classrooms, it's a perfect thing for schools, especially uh, schools is now, you know, their budget is going other places. They don't have the budget for Cintiqs and, and plus fancy computers. And a lot of the times they're using virtualized environments anyway, right? So perfect use case for that. Throw a couple of them into an art class, you're good to go. The last thing I would say is, uh, art studios who are maybe a, a little bit behind the curve. So believe it or not, most art studios don't just upgrade to the next, you know, fanciest thing out there because they're specs. They tend to use their devices for a long time. So when you're coming up on the end of life type situations for hardware, I could definitely see where something like this would be useful because you can go buy 10 of them without having to buy 10 new computers. And even if they're a stopgap between generations, uh, I could still see it very valuable, especially for painters and you know, the other things I said before. Anyway, that's my review. Did you guys bring my food? If you are interested in reviews for other Huion devices, why don't you check out these guys right here and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Thanks for watching.